So, uh, good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here to share our experiences around digital transformation and using design thinking to design digital transformation. I'm just brief introduction. I'm from HICOM. HICOM is a company from Europe, uh, operating mostly in Germany and Poland. And uh, we are focused on bringing customer experience uh, area solutions, which we design and implement, especially in the area of self-service, e-commerce and digital transformation. And we work for the biggest companies from Europe to, to have them deliver the best customer experiences with digital technology. And uh, myself, I am, I got 25 years of experience if in uh, leading design teams in technology companies and consulting companies. And uh, my experience is uh, from more than 30 e-commerce and self-service projects, five large, large scale transformations, digital transformations, five e-banking implementations. So many large scale projects uh, is uh, in my experience. So I would like to share these experiences with you and show how it evolved to, to think how the digital transformation um, can be designed to be more successful. So starting the, the webinar, just let's start, what is the digital transformation? What is the definition? And there is no one definition. Of course, there are many definitions of it, but I would like to stick that to the definition that the digital transformation is a change how company delivers value, which is enabled by digital technology. So this is very important that the word change is important because there is a difference between digitalization and digital transformation. Digitalization is simply applying digital technology to the process. And uh, digital transformation is a change which is enabled by digital technology. What is the difference in the impact for the company? If we look on the, on the impact, if we apply digitalization, which is mostly process driven and, and, and mostly in most of the cases rather predictable, we have the quiet uh, digitalization effect, which is, of course, it's important, but the change is not very meaningful because you are applying the technology for the same rules, for the same business models, for the same processes, for the same relation with the customer. And of course, it generates some optimization. It generates some uh, value. Of, definitely, the processes can be done faster. The technology is better, is more modern, but there is no significant change in the organization. But if you are implementing change, which is goal-driven and emergent, it brings some new values and you use the digital technology, you have the true change. So it's a transformation. And, sorry. I, uh, I was uh, participating in uh, some digital transformations for let's say seven, eight years ago, started with the first ones. When, when, the, when the word digital transformation was coined, because the web before, of course, the word digital transformation, the changes with digital technology it existed, but the, 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 the term digital transformation was coined like about 12, 10 years ago. And the, the projects which were stamped with the digital transformation uh, sticker uh, appeared in my life eight years ago, nine, nine years ago. And one of the first ones was very big transformation of all the front office, uh, front layer, which is contact, customer contacting layer uh, of, of a large telecom company. And uh, I was responsible in a, 
uh, of uh, all the UX UI design uh, of this transformation, which was a really large project. In this, in this area, we had to design like a two and a half thousand screens of, of, of the applications. There were like 10 products, uh, many processes uh, and endless meetings and so on and so on. So this was like a really huge effort and the, 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 the design was very long and uh, it, it, it consisted in some phases which were linear and we were just now rowing down the details and it was hundreds of meetings and everything was driven by process. And it appeared that in the end, it didn't bring that true transformation because the company uh, during all these meetings, which were farther and farther from the real goal of the, of the transformation, started to convert current thinking and current processes into new te technology. So it didn't bring a significant change. And it brought us uh, to, to, to think that if we use the old methods like a process-driven design, predictable uh, approach, rigidly managed projects and technology-centric approach where the technology people are driving the transformation and the goal is to make an IT project. And uh, of course, the goal is to make the, the, the digital project successful. And this is nothing wrong about this, but, uh, but it doesn't lead to the true change. It leads rather to digital translation, bringing new technology into the old processes rather than uh, digital transformation. So what to do to, to, to make a di digital transformation? We should do something different way. And starting from that point, we started to, to think, how should we work on that digital transformation design to make it more successful, to make it to, to bring the true change, to, to meet the goals of the transformation? So we, we decided that we should di think differently about this. And, it, uh, to change the fundamentals, we started to think what methods can, can uh, bring us to digital transformation, which are goal-driven, emergent, collaborative. It means that we, we, we can work together with all stakeholders and customer-centric rather than technology-centric. So this uh, led us to the idea that there is a very big similarity between this goal-driven, imagined, collaborative, customer-centric approach with the design thinking values. So we, we, we started to, to think about bringing design thinking as a, as a way of thinking and uh, process, design thinking process, design thinking methods, design thinking um, tools and uh, design thinking um, ways of working into the designing of digital transformation. So basically uh, the father of bringing design thinking into business was uh, Tim Brown of IDU. So he said that design thinking is a, is a, a thing that integrates needs of people, the possibilities of technology and requirements for business success. And we, were, we started to think about this as a, as a whole, as a guide for the digital transformation design. And uh, we, we, when we started to think about this, we, we discovered that the design thinking methods can help us to answer for many vital questions of, of digital transformations, which were not asked or maybe not asked loud enough in uh, the old linear process. So first, uh, the, because the design thinking, uh, these three areas of, of, of focus, which bring value together, are viability, desirability, and feasibility. And in a viability, this business focus, we, we can focus what are the goals and what is the desired outcome. Then ask these questions in the beginning, just 
to be really goal oriented, not process oriented. What are the most critical success factors? It means not everything is equally important. In the digital transformations, projects are usually huge because most of them, they are translating the huge companies, processes, uh, ways of working and uh, ways how they, uh, they serve, deliver value to the clients. And th these are complex companies. So if we go to the, that everything is equal, we will end up with the very long and very detailed process. So we need to focus what is important to whom. And uh, when we start to benefit from transformation, because if we, the, the previous transformation, the early transformations are usually like a multi-year project uh, planned for two, three, five years. And in a waterfall methodology, big bang approach, it means that after five years, you, you, you see the first results. So this is a very vital question for the, for the uh, business viability of the, of the transformation and from the feasibility point of view the tech mostly driven by technology because technology and uh, and the people is the the biggest cost of transformation in in the, in the companies so what technology will is needed to 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 power the solution what what uh, effort we need to put and th this is very in technology oriented transformations the early transformations People were very focused on technology. So if we exchange one technology to another one with uh, help with, of the implementation vendor, it will solve all the process, uh, problems. But it usually generate a lot of problems during the transformation because people who are usually doing the business and they were loaded with work started to work with company which were doing the transformation and were heavily overloaded. So do we have uh, people, do we have an organization which can transform itself? Do we, uh, and what is the cost of achieving these goals? And in the end, it's the, the new area which happens to be emerging in transformations, the area of who we are going to do it for. If we are doing the transformation for the customers and the customers will be uh, affected by it, and because customers usually bring the value to the company, they are bringing money to, to pay everything in the company. They are the, the main source of the, of the value. So if we make a transformation, we need to invite people into this and ask ourselves, will this solution will fill their needs? And what experience you want to deliver? Because the to, transformation is a change to change the experience because it's a change for, for changing everything. So a chance for changing everything. So we can use this chance if we uh, implement just the digitalization for the old processes, it will be the same stuff for the customers, but on different technology. So uh, how it impact the customer lives? Will it appeal to them? How, how we make them, uh, at, uh, our company attractive to them through these uh, new tools and new features? So basically, we get a bunch of new questions which are raised and possibility to answer these questions on the very early stages. So design thinking is a really tool to, to use, so we, we thought so. So uh, we started to think how to uh, put the design process into design thinking process. And usually design thinking is, uh, design thinking process is, we, we think about this as a rather sh short uh, burst of, 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 uh, of design. It's, uh, it, it used to be the, the design thinking process. It used to be like a, in older times, like several weeks, we were thinking about this, like this, but new approaches, new sprints, design sprints approach uh, brought us even to more narrow time boxes. And we expect that this thinking process will be finished in five days or even one day sometimes. And we of course do that, but we as a company, we thought that we can expand it into the, let's say multi-month process. 
that because transformation is huge so we need to have uh, time to to do really vast research and have time to synthesize it and uh, choose the, what is important and design it so we use the classical double diamond process from from london business uh, london design school and which is first diamond is about doing the right things it means what are we going to do discover what what uh, what what is important they discover the important information which are synthesized into the strategy simply and in the second diamond we can design the the the, the, the things which are the the the, the, the right things for the customer, the right things for the, the transformation solution. So looking at this in details, we used some design thinking and service design tools and built into the, this uh, approach. So I will go briefly through, this, uh, through these tools. And we, the, the, the idea is to go from the moment that we need to change. We, we, have, we need to start digital transformation to in the end of the process, to the moment when the digital transformation is designed and uh, uh, companies ready to start develop it and in agile mode. So when we know that we want to start, so what, what we do to start it? And, the, the, there is a, a book from David Rogers, it's called Digital Transformation Playbook. And there is a really uh, sentence which I, I think is important, that digital transformation, it's not about technology. It's about strategy and new ways of thinking. Technology is an enabler for this. It means we can, with a technology, we can do it, but we, shouldn't start from the technology. So we start from the strategy and the, the first meetings are, of course, in pre-pandemic times, there were big rooms in, where we met with the boards of the companies and uh, started to, to think about what is, uh, what is the goal of it? What do we want to achieve? And this is, uh, when we, when we started to do it on a, let's say, on a, uh, we, we, we used uh, standard uh, tools from, uh, from uh, design thinking tools uh, from uh, Alexander Ostervalde, which is business model canvas, and another tool which is applied over this, which is called current future buyers, and we mix them together just to um, have a view of what the company looks like this, like today, before the transformation. And we try to see the company in the same dimensions, all the dimensions of business model canvas, but even detail with numbers, detail with the customer segments, with the market shares and so on and so on, to see the, the company after the transformation. When the transformation is done and one year or two years later when it impacts the organization so we can see the picture of where the transformation is going to bring the company to thanks to this we can see what products are more important what segments are more important it means that we got really good compass very good navigation for what are the goals of the management? How they think about the strategy? This is really important because these short meetings in the beginning, they really are applied on everything we do later. So after that, we, we go to the customers and we, we uh, this is very important because if, the, if, if we want to, to change something for the customers, we need to start to bring them into the, in, into the conversation. So uh, this is one of the longest uh, and the biggest efforts of, of, of uh, 
this uh, transformation design and we go for the interviews with the real uh, people who are resembling the personas who are the, the representatives of the of the company segments and we we really carefully using customer journey mapping uh, are looking at the company to the eyes of the customer and see what they expect from the company what they need what they what are the motivations of them because what is their life about because we can if we understand what what is important to to the customers and what are the goals of the customers we can deliver the true change and uh, we use the customer journey mapping well we get uh, many dimensions of the uh, map of the experience the what the information they need what is the, the let's say dialogue with the client what the what this uh, effort of the client so we know where we should improve and what are the important points of the, of the transformation? Should what should be transformed, and we can we can convert it into the the uh, the, the plan of uh, of the improvement. So we can set the priorities, and uh, used to this customer goals. The customer goals are very important. Customer goals. Uh, this is something which we derive from the customer journey mapping. And customer goals are just sentences that my, I, I need to buy things easily. I want, to, I want to know what is on the track with delivery. So this is basically the, the simple goal, the simple sentence, but uh, this is very important for all the road mapping process and the future management of the transformation. Because if we think about the features, about the functionalities, we are focused on uh, things which are not bringing the value to the client. But if we say that the time of the portion of, uh, of the work we want to deliver, which is launched uh, in, uh, during the, the agile delivery process, is fulfilling the goal of the customer. It means that we deliver something which is viable from the eyes, looking at the, uh, with the eyes of the customer. So thanks to this, we built the roadmaps, which are uh, uh, built with the customer goals. And there is a value for the company, value for the customer. There is uh, the dependencies, the uh, there are also the effort uh, measures so we can easily manage the things what is uh, the most important for the company what big brings the the biggest uh, top line let's say result what is important for the for the customers so it uh, it can be measured by nps or any other uh, any other measurement of the customer experience but it can be also uh, uh, measured by uh, other, uh, like uh, more detailed, let's say, measurement uh, methods like uh, customer satisfaction or customer effort score. So if we know that, we got the strategy. We got like first diamond ready. So we've got strategy ready. We can choose the area we want to start from in the transformation and start to develop it. So we can start the design the, the things. And we use also uh, for this the, a lot of design thinking and service design uh, approaches. We start with experience design because in every presentation should be Steve Jobs. So this is the moment. Uh, he said once when he came back to the Apple company after being outside doing the other valuable things, um, 
it's a, a very nice video on YouTube. Uh, you can you can find it. That this is uh, Steve Jobs' insult response, and uh, he he in this response he said, "You've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology." It means the customer experience is everything because this affects the value. And we really took this to our hearts and started with a designing experience. And designing experience, it's not uh, as many companies think design the screens because experience is something which generated in the heads of people. It's generated, it's a, it's a total sum of experiences, which is, is, is in our mind after the interactions with the company. So we're starting with a designing this, designing what customer, what problem has, the, what, uh, what problem we want to solve, what is the customer goal, what, what he wants to achieve with this, uh, with this part of, uh, of the process or part of the journey. And uh, we think how we can deliver it. And after that, we go, we go with more detailed, things like uh, designing the, the whole uh, service in multi-channel, because this is very important that now the customers having mobile phones in hands, they are really, uh, really operating in omni-channel. They are really uh, changing channels as they want, as they need. Uh, if, they, if they cannot find something on the screen of the, the smartphone, they're just switching to the phone and calling someone. And they are driven by the, the goal. But it's, for them, it's very simple. I cannot find something, I'm calling you. But for the company, it's very complicated. This is very complex uh, challenge because the, this is unpredictable. If the company has like a, 20 customers, of course we can handle this, but we usually help companies with uh, millions of customers. So it should be done at scale. So, and uh, we use Service Blueprint, which is a service design tool, one of the let's say landmark service design tools uh, to, to map the omni-channel uh, service and show all the switches between channels during the going through the customer journey. And we can also map what is happening on the service side. It means what service people can do for the customer to, to, to serve this journey and what systems they need. And in the end, in this very bottom, you can see on the picture in this very little gray, you got the, what is happening in the deep company systems to fulfill the, to enable this, this journey. So we got like very detailed uh, scheme what is happening during the, the customer journey in the company. So this is a little bit different from the simple diagram like uh, uh, of the flow because of two things. In the top, you got the journey. It means that you got everything from the customer side and in the very top, it's the, it's the goal. And so you always remember what is the goal of the customer and you, you look through this goal when you see that this omni-channel changes in the middle. And when we when we design the experience, we can go to the to the prototyping. We can uh, design the the digital uh, screens. We can we can we can design this digital experience. So this is like a process, very iterative, uh, interactive with the a lot with interactive uh, a lot with the customers, and uh, who are verifying if we are the, 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 the good job, if the if really designers designed well the application and fulfill the goals of the customer. And it, it's easy, there is low effort of using this, it's fast, it's pleasant. And the, all, the, all the prototypes are examined with the, with the customers uh, in, in a several deeper and deeper validation sessions. 
So this is very iterative process. There are many of, of uh, uh, phases where we going from the key screens, just few screens which are essential for the idea, just to check the, if we validate if we are right with the idea to very detailed and real life looking uh, prototypes. And for, uh, after this, we can go to the technology finally, <laughs> because technology is enabling this. And without the uh, technology, you cannot do that transformation. So uh, it's not the easy part. We, we need to translate the, the everything, all the concept into the technology architecture. And the architecture is uh, critical. It's, it's critical for delivering the optimal experience because uh, now in this multi-touch point world where everyone can have, uh, wants to have a, um seamless integration of the experience just seamless switching between channels and the channels can be your tv can be your car can be your watch and uh, it, it it should work as a one the architecture is, is is crucial it should look like easy but in the below the the water it's like an iceberg it's quite complicated and we need to uh, to to make a solution architecture which is uh, ready not only for the beginning of transformation but ready for the whole path and even um, assuming that the architecture may elements i mean some applications may change during the transformation it's uh, maybe 10 years ago there was uh, the approach that one technology will solve all the problems. So most of the companies were organizing the transformation based on a one monolithic big application, which was serving all the channels, all the service channels. But now we can see that there is a rather uh, approach to making composable architectures, architectures which are modular, which are that you can change modules during the way. and. Uh, using the best of bridge technologies, smaller po portions, which are talking to each other through APIs. And this is very important to design the architecture very well, because this is uh, something like a engine and a, uh, undercarriage for the car. It's not only the beautiful, uh, beautiful chassis, but also the, all the mechanics. So uh, from this, we, we can uh, define the MVP and uh, start, start uh, the project to implement the transformation. And one thing I want to mention, which is important that all this work we do in co-creation, it means that the, the transformation of the business is so vital for the for the for the company that it's impossible to do it from the outside. It, it's impossible to come to the company and say you should do transformation like this because every company is different, and means the designers and uh, even researchers, the business the consultants, the architects, they are working together in one team with. Uh, with a board, with a, a management, with people who are on the front line to make a transformation successful. So I'm approaching to the end of this webinar and I got some advice for, for all the people who are part or are going to be part of the transformation and are going to be part of the design process of the of the digital transformation so this is like some advice for this number one is the be in constant contact with the goals uh, i saw the the most unsuccessful transformation i've ever seen i have participated uh lost the goals in the very very beginning just the goals were disconnected with the with the process 
very quickly, everything went into details and into the process, collecting the information and translating into this into the diagrams. And uh, when when we disconnect with the goals, we we lose many values. Of course, we lose the the, the meaning of the transformation, but of course, we lose also what is important. And as I said before, the transformation is a huge process. So. Uh, if you lose some, what is important, we will end up with something which is, uh, which is long, detailed, but not bringing value. Uh, you should engage all levels of stakeholders. Uh, there were transformations where people were working uh, mostly in uh, IT departments. There were some transformation working only with talking with the, with the Sea level, uh, sea level decision makers. Uh, I, I think that the the most successful design processes we had, they were engaging people from from the top, who were really were not only on the kickoff, but on a, all the crucial moments of the transformation design process. They were taking the leadership, but opened for the equal discussion of people who are working in the field, working with the customers, who are, who are close to the customers, and also from the, with the people who are enabling the transformation. You should bring customers into process because uh, customers, you are doing this for ultimately for them. They are beneficiaries of this, and they will be judging if the transformation is good. It's just simply buying more or coming back or not buying more and going somewhere else. And we really thought that we should bring customers to the process every time, which is that it doesn't make sense, it, but it, it makes sense so many times that I, I think that we, we, we pointed that it's like a 10 or, or more times during the, the, the process of uh, design thinking process you saw, the double diamond process. Be ready for non-linear work. It means that you, if you design the, the, the uh, design project, you should have like a space in this and not to have like a tight schedule because this work will, uh, will be, going back for the moment, we were modifying something, changing the, 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 the things. This is a very, uh, this, because people are discovering things in a moment which are not planned. And uh, this is a really big benefit of a design thinking. Of course, it's not, a bene it's not a benefit for the efficiency of the process, but for the overall value, it's very important. That's why we are designing in the beginning the transformation because the transformation costs a lot and uh, the realization of it is very costly. It means that it's much better to do the changes as early as possible. That's why we are checking things as early as possible because in the beginning it costs nothing. But if you do the things wrong, changing this costs sometimes a lot of money. And something about doing things it's the, we should be ready for balancing between structurization of the process and having space for innovation. Because if we will be too strict, if you structurize too much, we will lose discovery. We will be it will be difficult to 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 find a space for innovation. To but innovation is essential because the we we are changing things and the digital technology is enabling the change. So we should have a space for innovation. And the last one is that transformation is always a change, a chance for simplification. And simpler is always better because it costs less, it's delivered faster and people like it. Customers like simpler. Our brains like simpler. So we should always think that 
the transformation process is a ch chance to make the things simpler because companies are growing with the systems. They're growing with processes, with the things which are done by exception, ideas, and so on and so on. And if you want to put all these exceptions, these, uh, these uh, old ideas, old processes, old promotions, or everything into the new technology, you will not solve the problems. You will generate more. So less is more. So basically, this is it. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending this webinar.